Sanjay, are we ready to roll? Going live. Good morning, viewers. This is Monica reporting from Nirvana TV. I'm standing outside the sessions court where the trial of the century is about to begin. People are gathering here. Everyone is anxious about the charges being brought posthumously against four eminent historical personalities. They all want to know what the trial is going to debate on and what the verdict is going to be. Let's hear directly from the people. Excuse me, sir. Would you like to say a few words on the upcoming trial? Sure. Uh, you know, these are eminent personalities. They should be acquitted. What about you, sir? <clears throat> uh, I disagree. The courts are eventually going to find them guilty. And you, ma'am? Um, I don't know. I mean, who are we to pass any judgment, right? I don't think we can decide. Well, it looks like public opinion is sharply divided. And while it is the jury that gives the verdict, the lay person will also be motivated to think and draw their own conclusions. All right. Proceedings are about to begin. Let's go live. All rise. Court is now in session. Honorable Judge Rukmani is presiding over the court in the matter of People versus Oppenheimer et al. The people are represented by the prosecutor, Mrs. Pandit, and the defendants are represented by Mrs. Drishti. The jury is virtual, but their foreman is here. The public is watching remotely. Is the prosecution ready with their opening remarks? Yes, Your Honor. Your Honor, the people allege that these celebrated defendants have achieved fame by violating the principles of a parigraha, the virtue of non-possessiveness, Aham, a sense of pride, and Ahimsa, the practice of non-violence. In fact, their expectation of a quid pro quo, getting rewarded for their work, is also a direct violation of the preachings of the Gita. Karmanye vadikaraste ma faleshu kadachana. Your Honor, the plaintiff's intent to establish these charges beyond reasonable doubt. Is the defense ready? Ready, Your Honor. The acts of my defendants have been taken out of context, ignoring the circumstances of their actions. They all plead not guilty. Let us begin with our first defendant, please. Your Honor, our first defendant is Mr. Lincoln, an ex-president. Mr. Lincoln, you caused huge socio-political instability by the abolition of slavery. Is that not true? On the contrary, the existence of slavery was causing long-term instability. A man's skin color does not make him inferior, let alone be treated as a slave to someone with fair skin. All men are created equal. At their core, they are pure souls, shudatmas as we call them. But you instigated the civil war that took thousands of lives. You encouraged violence, Hinsa. How can you defend that? Objection, Your Honor. The defendant is a great emancipator and one of the founding fathers of our nation. Sustained. Okay. In that civil war, the Northerners killed their fellow citizens from the South. Isn't that Hinsa? Hinsa? It was my dharma to keep the country united. In Mahabharata, even Arjun had to fight his relatives. We fought for equality and justice. So you're basically saying the war and the violence were all justified. Objection. The prosecution is calling for interpretation by the defendant. Sustain. Prosecution, please come to the point. Well, Your Honor, to deal with injustice, Mahatma Gandhi adopted the principles of non-violence, which essentially led to the same outcome. Members of the jury, the plaintiffs contend that Mr. Lincoln is guilty of indulging in unnecessary violence. Mr. Lincoln, please tell us why this was necessary. Your Honor, the universal religion of humanity has taught me that tolerance of injustice is also a sin. Any further cross-examination? None, Your Honor. All right. Who is the second defendant? Your Honor, we call on stand Mr. Churchill, an ex-Prime Minister. Mr. 
Mr. Churchill, as Secretary of State for War, did you advocate for the use of chemical weapons? Yes. My country had to be prepared in case our enemies used it. In one of your memos, you stated, and I quote, I am strongly in favor of using poisoned gas against uncivilized tribes. Yes, but my colleagues were uncomfortable about their use. Also, did you not turn a blind eye to the Bengal famine of 1943? You let millions die in hunger and yet insisted that rice be exported from Bengal. Indians themselves were responsible for the famine. And that's why you said they breed like rabbits. Objection, Your Honor, that is just hearsay. Sustained. Your Honor, his published statements, in fact, confirmed that he did say this. The defendant believes in racial hierarchy and considered the likes of Gandhi a threat to his country's empire. He is therefore guilty of lacking compassion. Mr. Churchill, did you ever actually authorize the use of chemical weapons? I never authorized their use. And how did you handle the Bengal famine? We did eventually send the food grains and the rice export was needed to support our war against the Nazis. That's all, Your Honor. Our third defendant is Mr. Edison, Your Honor, the inventor. Mr. Edison, could you please share with the court what your most well-known invention was? Oh, I don't know. I've had over 1,000 inventions, including the direct current. But the most well-known one was the light bulb. Sir, may I ask if you're being egotistical about your inventions? <laughs> egotistical? Not at all. Proud? Yes. But is that a crime? My light bulbs have lighted houses. My movie camera entertains millions. I can go on and on. Okay, let's take another case. Nikola Tesla. <laughs> what about that maverick? Well, everything here is running on alternate current. Did you not degrade his invention simply to satisfy your ego? Objection, Your Honor. Calling out limitations of other inventions is good for science. It cannot be called degradation. Was it for science or was it for winning your war? Alternate current is a real danger to human lives as we could die of electric shock. There is no such risk with my invention of direct current. So you decided to demonstrate the risk of AC using violent methods? You applied it on innocent animals and killed them. One animal. That to an elephant that had gone crazy. Thank you. Your Honor, Mr. Edison here has just confessed that he lacks compassion for animals. Therefore, he is found guilty of the principles achieved there. Defense, any cross-examination? Mr. Edison, can you tell us why you used an elephant? Sure. I did not randomly kill that elephant. I did it for the sake of saving human lives in the future. That's all, Your Honor. All right, let us bring in our final defendant. Mr. Oppenheimer, you're a physicist and the creator of the atomic bomb. Thanks to your creation, thousands of people lost their lives in a matter of seconds. How do you justify your actions? Your Honor, I cannot be held responsible for how my invention is used. That was simply unfortunate. Unfortunate? You clearly violated the principles of non-violence. The potential for loss of lives with your creation is enormous and you knew it. My duty was to follow the instructions of my government to protect our people. From? From the ruthless Japanese forces. And as per the Gita, it is not for me to worry about the fruits of my karma. Your Honor, plaintiffs strongly condemn the creation of a weapon of mass destruction that has now become a threat for eternity. He is therefore guilty. Not really, Madam Prosecutor. Mr. Oppenheimer, would you please share what followed Hiroshima and Nagasaki? Certainly. I pleaded with my president to stop the development of the hydrogen bomb. Then I stood down from my post. And finally, as a part of my prayaschit, I continued the study of Gita to find answers to my internal conflicts. But Your Honor, all this came too late. The harm was already done. Mr. Oppenheimer, you may step down. Mr. Foreman and members of jury, please come back with your verdict. Mr. Foreman, please pronounce the jury's verdict. Yes, Your Honor. 
This is a trial not confined to any statutory laws. In fact, this trial is based on the principles of life. With your permission, I would like to summarize our observations. The defense emphasized Mr. Lincoln's stand on equality, Mr. Churchill's patriotism, Dr. Oppenheimer's repentance, and Mr. Edison's innovation. On the other hand, the prosecution clearly established that the defendants violated the principles of aparigraha, non-possessiveness, lack of humility, abetting hinsa, violence, and their lack of compassion towards animals. These facts clearly point a finger at the defendants. We have therefore come to the conclusion that the Honorable Judge, sorry for the interruption. We are ordinary citizens from various faith groups and we promote the life principles, the violation of which was the very basis of this trial. We were watching from outside the court and we please seek your permission to speak. This is very unusual. But given the extraordinary nature of this trial, permission is granted. Your Honor, after much debate on the actions of the defendant and keeping in mind the guiding principles we the people have concluded that the ultimate truth and the reality is far more complex and multifaceted. We expect everyone to fulfill their duties, their karma without expectations of rewards. However, we do observe that humans perform actions only with expectations of fruits in returns. Matra faleshu sadachana. But in the end, forgiveness is the greatest quality of any human being. We the people therefore endorse uttam kshama. May all evil that's been done be in vain. God, please forgive them, for they know not what they do. But at the same time, to what extent can sins be pardoned? We therefore think this trial is inconclusive as it stands today. A verdict would be too premature, Your Honor. Thank you. The court agrees with the prosecution that some wrongdoing has happened. Therefore, the court directs all defendants to a transformation process through Prashit, through self-realization and self-introspection. These cases are very complex. In our minds, the evaluation of the good versus bad, karma versus the fruit, will keep going on. Karma versus the fruit will keep going on. The court is adjourned. <laughs>